Gavin Newsom has essentially endorsed Donald Trump's ability to run for U.S. president and shut down his Democrat colleagues. Biden is underwater on every major policy in all but one of the important swing states. Joe Biden says he will fix the southern border, but then uses deceptive tactics to actually keep an open for even longer, allowing millions more to illegally enter the United States. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos. When you hit that like button, it helps get this video out to more people. So thank you so much. President Joe Biden has started the week off by using some creativity in an effort to solve Republicans' demands to secure the southern border. In an effort to appease both sides, Biden has asked Mexico's president to help him manage unprecedented migratory flow in the Western Hemisphere. To get talks moving, Biden announced he is sending his top border security officials to Mexico to speak to President Lopez Obrador on his behalf. While this seems like an honest move, some are speculating that Biden's planning to ask Obrador to reroute migrants to a different part of the southern border that is less televised to the American people. As it currently stands, negotiations regarding the border are expected to last into the second week of January, which gives Biden and his team the ability to come up with a solution uh, to get Republicans to release money to Ukraine. Now, with uh, Texas making it illegal to cross into Texas without being arrested and House Speaker Mike Johnson holding Ukrainian uh, funds hostage, there is no doubt in my mind that Biden will have to negotiate. But in the meantime, he's going to draw this out as long as he can so that more and more illegal immigrants can enter the country and hopefully vote Democrat down the road. That is the plan. Now, after Trump was removed from the ballot in Colorado, he accused Joe Biden of being the real insurrectionist over his border and energy policies. For clarity, Merriam Webster's definition of insurrectionist is a person who revolts against an established government authority. Now, in my opinion, Biden is clearly breaking his own federal laws by allowing massive groups of illegal immigrants and placing unnecessarily harsh laws on oil production in the United States. If the Supreme Court approves the 14th Amendment uh, clause to disqualify Donald Trump, don't be surprised if you see Republicans use similar disqualifying rules to keep Biden off of the ballot. In fact, at least four Republican states have said if Trump is removed from Colorado, they will remove Biden from their ballots based on illegal behavior on the southern border and his unwillingness to protect the United States from invasion. These are his constitutional duties, and he is neglecting them on purpose. Now, this vicious cycle must be stopped before it started, and none other than California's Governor Gavin Newsom realized this. In response to his lieutenant governor calling for Trump to be removed from the California ballot, Newsom bashed her in a statement uh, saying this is a political distraction. Instead, he applauded the Democratic approach by stating, in California, we defeat candidates at the poll. Now, I give credit where credit is due. Uh, I have to agree with Newsom here. Let the American people, we the people, decide who is going to be president of the United States? Uh, is it going to be us or is it going to be those in power that hate their political enemies in the Democrat and the Republican Party? Now, isn't it interesting that right now there's an article out about how Vladimir Putin had his political opponent arrested and as of today, they just found him after missing. He is in a Siberian uh, prison, a frozen prison where he is just basically living his life in misery in order to not compete with um, Vladimir Putin. 
So is that what America is becoming? Now, this is interesting because by endorsing Donald Trump's right to be on the ballot, Gavin Newsom has also, also essentially acknowledged that Donald Trump was not behind the January 6th Capitol riot. This is, after all, the reason why Colorado is saying Trump can't be on the ballot. So uh, Newsom is saying he deserves to be on the ballot and that he did not commit a crime of causing the riot at the Capitol. So it's basically a double endorsement from Gavin Newsom for Donald Trump. Now, speaking of Newsom, I'm no longer believing that he's going to join the presidential race later this year. It takes years to prepare to run an effective campaign for president. So I don't think he wants to risk his first federal career uh, opportunity by losing to Donald Trump. I think instead Biden and Kamala Harris will go all the way and then Biden will bow out making Kamala the new president and then they might bring Gavin Newsom in to be her vice president. Now, although Newsom was right on the Donald Trump ballot situation, a federal judge has ruled that his new law banning concealed carry in 26 public locations is unconstitutional. The judge stated the new law was repugnant to the Second Amendment, which allows permit holders to carry a gun in public to defend yourself. If this law is passed, people will no longer be able to carry guns in public locations such as banks, churches, medical facilities, or playgrounds. Uh, what do you think? Does this go against our Second Amendment rights of uh, the right to protect ourselves? Yes, you have to follow laws. Yes, you need to pass background checks. But uh, keeping people from having a gun, that is unconstitutional. Now, this year has been nothing short of controversial. But former President Donald Trump seemingly does not want to end the year that way. In response to Biden's campaign, uh, correlating his words to Hitler's words, Donald Trump stated, First of all, I know nothing about Hitler. I'm not a student of Hitler. I never read his works. They say he said something about blood. He didn't say it the way I said it either, by the way. It's a very different kind of statement. Now, I think Trump is smart to respond to this. They're obviously trying to associate him with Adolf Hitler because everyone thinks that Hitler is a pile of human garbage. And so he's disassociating himself by saying, I'm not playing your games and I'm not Hitler. Okay, now uh, everyone could have a great end of year, uh, but a woman I recently interviewed, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, did not. She was swatted for the eighth time at her home on Christmas Day. For those unaware, swatting is when someone calls in a fake emergency to the police. Oh, there's a shooting. Someone's being held hostage, something like that. What results is that law enforcement shows up. They are hyper vigilant and they over respond with force, uh, which could cause injury or death. Now, thankfully, Miss Green's security team was able to intervene and stop the police from coming in with guns drawn and using force. Uh, but this is what she had to say on Twitter. I was just swatted. This is like the eighth time on Christmas with my family here. My local police are the greatest and shouldn't have to deal with this. And neither should you, Miss Marjorie Taylor Greene. Now, I hope they find this loser and he is tried for his... Uh, attempt at uh, attempted murder by police. Um, I was grossed out when Nancy Pelosi's husband was attacked in their home, and I'm grossed out by this attempt at taking out Miss Marjorie Taylor Greene. Transportation Secretary uh, Pete Buttigieg has just claimed that most Americans will no longer drive gas-powered cars in the future. During an interview on Fox, the secretary claimed that their goal is to have half electric, half gas on the road by the end of the decade, so 2030. As of right now, only about 1% of cars on the road are electric, which means the Biden administration needs to pressure the oil companies, they need to pressure the car makers, and they need to pressure the American people. Now, I am worried that if Biden wins in 2024, he's going to force gas prices even higher than they did about a year ago, 
and that they're going to push a, an electric car agenda on all of us. Now, these electric cars, they're cool, but they don't solve the environmental problem. They just shift it to a different area. Almost all electric cars right now are powered by fossil fuels, whether that's carbon or oil. Um, some kind of fossil fuel keeps the electric grid from falling apart. So maybe they should focus on improving the electric grid before they bring 300 million cars online that drain and, and cause blackouts. All right, now, uh, the, the worry again is that they're going to drive the price of oil up, which drives the price of food up and rent up and haircuts and everything. It's the reason that we're dealing with this unbearable inflation is because they allowed gas prices to go so darn high, but that's the reality we live in. And you all, you all know I'm telling the truth because you felt it in your wallet. Okay, now over in Russia, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu claimed they completed their main goal of 2023, which was to thwart Ukraine's counteroffensive. Sho Shoigu also claimed that Russia captured the fortified town of Marienka, which was a major part of shutting down Ukraine's counteroffensive. Now, unfortunately, it appears that Russia is telling the truth as British intelligence found that Ukraine has started to take a more defensive approach to their country. Ukraine's general, Valery Zaluzhny, confirmed the stalemate by stating, just like in the First World War, we've reached a level of technology that puts us into a stalemate. There will most likely be no deep or beautiful breakthrough. However, new reports today did show that Ukraine uh, inflicted major damage on one of Russia's warships down near the Black Sea. So there is still carnage going on on both sides. Uh, but overall, it does look like Russia is winning the war and Ukraine is going to have to come up with a plan B if they don't want to concede land and seek a peace agreement but I'll continue to keep you updated on that. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Hope you had a great Christmas, a lot of time with the family. Remember, it's more about your presence with the people you love than the presence you give to the people you love. So just keep that in mind. Hey, give this video a like, hit that subscribe button. We're trying to get to 1.5 million amazing subscribers and I appreciate each and every one of you. Hey, make sure to check out this super important video. There's really great information in it, and I will see you on the next video.